The order, the member for Cowper. The Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I can understand why the Liberal Party is playing games with this, because this motion requires them to do something that they always hate doing, and that is to come clean with the Australian people. This motion has got four simple parts. It is acknowledging, number one, that the Australian people rejected work choices at the last election because it had hurt Australian working families by allowing them to be ripped off and allowing them to be dismissed without remedy or reason. Secondly, it is a recognition that the bill that the parliament just passed ends the making of new Australian workplace agreements and means that on and from 1 January 2010 we are moving to a workplace relations system without any new individual statutory employment agreements in it. That's Labor's way. That's what the Australian people voted for at the last election, a workplace relations system without any individual statutory employment agreements within it. And the fourth part of this motion requires the Liberal Party to do what they don't want to do. It requires them to come clean on whether or not they will reintroduce Australian workplace agreements or any other form of individual statutory employment agreement at any time if re-elected. We come to very work choices uh, on this side Deputy of the Prime House. To very will work return, choices. Will, uh, resume her seat. Uh, the member for North Sydney. No longer heard. The uh, honourable member for North Sydney uh, has moved that the speaker be no longer heard. Be no further heard. What? Um, You're getting it pointed you, out to you now. You're getting it pointed out to you now. In the past, the speakers have ruled that there needs to be a delay in terms of you can't move uh, successive resolutions that the. Uh, that the speaker be no longer heard, in spite of the fact we know they don't want to hear about their record on work choices. He's getting a ruling, fool. <laughs> I uh, uphold the point of order and call the Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you very much. We come to very work choices and we want a tombstone Order. that says the Deputy rest Prime in Minister will resume her seat. Order. The Deputy Prime Minister will resume her seat. The Mr. member for Sturt. Speaker, on your, uh, your ruling and uh, the point of order taken by uh, the Leader of uh, our Government Business, as a 15-year veteran of this House, I have, a very clear recollection. I have a very clear recollection of the previous opposition uh, taking the same point of order or moving the same motion against uh, uh, the member for Warringah when order, he was the leader of government no business of in the order. House. I ask the and I would ask you to, re to resume. There is no point of order. I call the Deputy no, Prime Minister. Unbelievable. Thank you. We come to very work choices. We are putting a tombstone on it that says rest in peace. We want to know whether the Liberal Party seeks to exhume it. Now, on this motion, and probably they're in a party room meeting now trying to work out how to vote, but on this motion, the Liberal Party has got three choices. They can vote with the government despite the secret desire of their hearts Order. to the keep Deputy work Prime choices. Minister will resume her seat. The Honourable Member for North Sydney. I move the speaker be no longer heard. The, the member be no longer heard. There, the uh, Minister, for Minister for Infrastructure does not have the call. Would you please uh, resume your seat? Uh, the Minister for Infrastructure took a point of order before which I upheld. Uh, and uh, well, I well, um, the, uh, the, mini the, 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 mini the member for North Sydney has has moved that the Deputy Prime Minister be no longer heard, and uh, the Minister for Infrastructure, presumably, uh, on, on the, a point of order. Mr. On a point of order. As, as you have been, it's a point of order on the basis of the motion that the uh, member for North Sydney has moved. House of Reps practice is very clear, Mr. <laughs> Deputy Speaker. The House has ruled on this motion. I uphold a point of order. Well, Mr. Speaker, I move to send him. <laughs> 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 
The, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, can I speak Mr. Speaker, uh, this is unprecedented for a government for a government to move such a motion. And clearly, the Labor Party hasn't worked out that they actually are in government. They actually haven't worked out that they are in government. So they are moving this sort of spurious motion to try and get television time tonight, right? When they've been telling us, and the leader of government business rang me yesterday and said to me, "We want to get through our bills. We want to get through our bills tomorrow. So can you cut short your speakers list so we can get through the bills?" And then the government moves an absurd Order motion the like this. Member for North Sydney will resume his seat. Order. The honourable member for North Sydney will resume his seat. The minister for infrastructure. Point of order, uh, point of order. Mr. Deputy Speaker. In in, uh, in your interests, exactly. you would be aware that this is a motion of dissent yes, in your right. ruling. That's right. yeah. In your ruling, the member opposite has to refer to your ruling, right. which was upholding point of order moved by myself, based upon House of Representatives practice that the House had determined a question, that the House had determined a question. He has to refer to I think the, the your ruling. Minister for Infrastructure. He hasn't mentioned I one thing the about your ruling. Member for North Sydney, who yeah. will focus on the Absolutely. grounds for his Absolutely. I'm more than happy to do so, Mr ruling. Speaker. We are moving dissent in your ruling because there has been a rich history in this place, particularly in relation to the now uh, the member for Warringah, as leader of government business, that on numerous occasions the then then opposition moved subsequent motions to close him down. And Mr. Speaker, if this is the way they're organised in the chamber, Lord knows how they're organised on expenditure review committee. Lord knows how they're organised uh, in relation to getting the budget right. And it should become as come as no surprise that they haven't got any answers in relation to Chinese trips. Chinese trips by the uh, now Minister for Agriculture and the Prime Minister order, and the Treasurer. The minister, uh, order. Um, the member for North Sydney will resume his seat. The Minister for Infrastructure. Thanks, On uh, a point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker. My point of order is that the member for North Sydney has lost his way, doesn't know what he's doing, and is now talking about, is now talking about issues that have nothing to do with your very specific and, might I say, correct ruling, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, the minister will resume his seat. I call the member for North Sydney, who will focus on the grounds for moving dissent well, from the chair's the ruling. The reason why I'm moving dissent is because the Labor Party in government the Labor Party in government has sought on numerous occasions, Mr Speaker, to try and get us to pull our speakers on various bills so they could speed up the activities of the House today in relation to other bills. They brought this order, motion on without any North consultation with his seat, The Minister for Infrastructure, on a point of order. Yes, Mr Speaker. Again, again, the member for North Sydney, the member for North Sydney is straying. You want to move dissent in your own party people. <laughs> That's up to you, folks. That's up to you. Uh, Just absurd. The, uh, Just absurd. Uh, the, on, the, the, the Minister for Infrastructure ought not to cast aspersions on the neutrality of the chair. Uh, as a Deputy Speaker, uh, I exercise this authority uh, regardless of the political party of which I might happen to be a member. And Mr Speaker, just to continue, and this is the background to our moving dissent, Mr, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Leader of Government Business rang me and said he wanted us to drop speakers off bills that were scheduled for today so, yeah, so, so, that he could, so that he could bring on those bills and have their finish with today. So what happens today, Mr Order. Deputy the Speaker, is they pull on this seat. stunt— The Minister for Infrastructure. Mr Speaker, uh, the member opposite has been given a number of opportunities to speak to the resolution. He can't because your ruling's right. I take up the invitation that was given by him and the member for Warringah and move the motion be put. Uh, the uh, Minister for Infrastructure can't move uh, the motion the motion be put because the question has not been stated from the chair. I call the Honourable Member for North Sydney. You don't understand the standing orders in your elite of government business. You don't understand the standing orders that you put in place. Oh, Mr Speaker, uh, it's interesting, isn't it, I thank Mr. You Deputy Speaker? Thank you for the promotion, but yeah, yeah, just, uh, Mr. I'm Deputy only the Deputy Speaker. Speaker. Uh, they run the parliament. 
It is the government that sets down the order of business for the day. It's the government that sets down the legislative agenda for the House. Here they are, Mr Deputy Speaker, moving a motion on their own time during government business. They don't understand the standing orders, Mr Deputy Speaker. They don't understand the standing orders. This is what you call a political stunt by the Order. government. The Honourable Member for North Sydney will resume his seat. The Minister for Infrastructure. Mr Speaker, the Member for North Sydney is not referring and hasn't referred once to why your ruling is wrong. He has to do that. He has to do that. Not state the obvious that there's politics conducted in this place. <laughs> well, the Minister for Infrastructure and, will... and, and that we're against work choices and they're for it. Well, we know that, Mr Speaker. Mr. We know that. Mr. De but the, 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 member for, sorry, the Minister for Infrastructure will resume his seat and I call the Member for North Sydney. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And how ironic it is that the Labor Party now hasn't realised they're in government because they're moving motions in this chamber to suspend standing orders, Mr Speaker. There's no recollection out of 13 years, out of 11 years of the Howard government, that the government would ever lose control of the chamber in the way that this Labor Party has lost control of the chamber today, and let alone having moved a motion. There is no precedent for it. We're back into the hawk years to try and find a precedent as we stand. And this just illustrates, Mr Deputy Speaker, that these people are more interested in stunts, they're more interested in the charade of government rather than in making hard decisions. And how ironic it is, Mr Deputy Speaker, that they had to move 34 amendments to their own work choices bill. And, and um, I bet the old the Greg member Conde for would be turning in his old order, union grave order, if, he, order. if he knew that. The member for North Sydney should resume his seat. He should focus in his speech on identifying why, in his view, the ruling of the chair is not correct. I call the member for North Sydney. In my view, Mr Deputy Speaker, the reason why uh, the Speaker's ruling should be overturned by this chamber is because the decision is wrong. The decision is clearly wrong. The decision is wrong based on, based on precedents involving the member for Warringah, based on precedents involving the previous the previous manager of opposition business, who on numerous occasions, numerous occasions moved on, numerous occasions moved that the leader of government business be no longer heard, and subsequent motions within the speaking time allocated to the member, the leader of government business, Mr. Speaker. And of course, what we know is that the own, the leader of government business in this place doesn't understand his own standing orders. He doesn't understand his own standing orders, and that's why he tried to Order, move the that we be no North longer Sydney heard on dissent. Will resume his seat, the Minister for Infrastructure, on a point of order. Yes, this is a dissent in your ruling, Mr. Speaker. From my ruling. From your ruling, the member for North Sydney must refer to your ruling and why it is wrong. I consider that the member for North Sydney is indeed focusing on the reasons for dissent from my ruling. I call the honourable member for North Sydney. And Mr. Uh, I, I, I tell you what, I give a little warning to the Minister for Agriculture. He shouldn't be at too outspoken the, at the moment. Uh, the member for North Sydney uh, ought not to warn anybody in the chamber. Only the deputy speaker or the occupant of the chair has the capacity to warn people. I call. I'm just the giving him some advice, North Mr. Deputy Sydney. Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Order. The member for North Sydney will resume his seat, as I understand there's another point of order from the Minister for Infrastructure. I ask that, I that call, threat got the be call withdrawn, yet, Mr. I call Speaker. the Minister for Infrastructure. I ask that that threat be withdrawn, Mr. Speaker. Well, you can't I make threats listening... across the chamber, Mr. Speaker. I... Not even from the party of work choices. I was listening. Um, I, I draw the minister's attention to what I believe uh, the manager of opposition business said. And what he said was he has a warning for. I don't consider it a threat, and I call the Honourable Member for North Sydney. Here, here, here. Thank Excellent you, Mr. Rule. Deputy Speaker. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, we want we want to get on with the business of the House. We want to get on with dealing with the government's legislative timetable. It is the government that has suspended its own standing orders to bring on a motion full of politics, vitriol, rhetoric, the same old tired stuff. That they've been running in opposition. They ran it in opposition. They won the election. We accept they won the election. But now they're in government, they actually have to make some decisions. 
I know it's going to come as a rude shock to the Treasurer, who should be out there studying the economics books rather than in here being party to a political stunt. Order. Economics the Honourable Member for Central North Coffee. Sydney will resume his seat, the Minister for Infrastructure, on a point of order. Under, under any circumstances, that was not referring to the motion, and I ask you to see if the member for North Sydney can refer to why your ruling was incorrect. You have to do that. Uh, order. The member for North Sydney will resume his seat as his time has expired. Is the motion seconded? The motion is seconded, Mr. The motion is sec Deputy Speaker. Seconded by the honourable Mr. member for. Uh, I haven't given you the call yet. Uh, the motion has been seconded by the honourable member for Sturt. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy, Deputy Speaker. And if I could take you back to the circumstances into which this dissent motion has arisen, the government, uh, the member for the Deputy Prime Minister, has moved a ludicrous, ridiculous, and embarrassingly uh, foolish motion in the House to suspend standing orders today to move a particularly foolish motion. The opposition, quite rightly, uh, are incensed that the government, having not made the transition to government, would reduce the House to this mockery and rather than getting on with the business of government. The Australian today has made a point in its own editorial how this government is big on symbolism and very short on making decisions in government. Unfortunately, today, in this uh, lunchtime debate, the government is fulfilling the worst thoughts of the editorial in the Australian. So the circumstances Order. of this dissent the resolution as moved by seat, the member. Uh, the or, or, Order. The honourable member will resume his seat, or I'll deal with him. Uh, the Minister for Infrastructure. This is not a dissent is a point in the of Australian order? editorial. Is, it, is yes, this a point Mr. of order? Uh, the, My the point of order is that. I call the Minister that... for Infrastructure on a point of order. Thanks. The the. Uh, the uh, member for Sturt has not referred to the motion that is moved. This is a motion of dissent in your ruling, and he has to speak to that. Well, the minister will resume his seat. I'd call the member for Sturt, and I'd ask him to be very focused in his contribution on his reason for seconding the motion of dissent. From the Deputy Speaker's room. Your guidance, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker, but I think I was quite correctly pointing out the circumstances of this dissent resolution. The member for North Sydney, quite rightly, uh, is concerned by the ruling that you have given that a motion that a member be no longer heard cannot be moved uh, against the same person speaking at a particular point in time. The dissent motion is that that ruling was incorrect, that in fact a motion that a member be no longer heard can be moved at any time. And in fact, the precedent for that is very clear. Uh, I have been in this parliament since 1993, the member for Warringah since 1994. I remember times when such, mem such uh, motions that a member be no longer heard were taken by the then opposition against the member for uh, Warringah the when he was the Minister the for, for Employment will Services. will resume his seat, the Minister for Infrastructure. Order, uh, Mr Speaker, I wonder if, um, if uh, um, Standing Order uh, 87 has been complied with, Mr Deputy Speaker, particularly the second sentence. <laughs> I call the member for Sturt. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker. And I think I was being entirely relevant to the motion, which was pointing out, in fact, uh, that we are dissenting from your ruling because it breaks with previous precedent. The precedent for this, the precedent for this, after the Prime Minister had slipped out of the House, wanting to avoid the embarrassment of this stunt from his deputy. The precedent for this was when the minister, the member for Warringah, was the minister for employment services, and such motions order, were taken order, against him by the then Sturt opposition. Will resume his seat. This is the point of order. order. The member for Sturt will resume. Order. The member for Sturt will resume his seat. Uh, and it is a matter for the chair to determine whether a, a point of order is frivolous or otherwise. I call the minister for infrastructure. Presumably on a point of order. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Hopefully not a frivolous standing one. Standing order 87 is that a member moving a motion of dissent must submit the motion in writing. Has that happened? I understand it has been submitted in writing. There is no point of order. The honourable member order. I haven't called the member for Sturt. 
I call the member for Sturt. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. Of course it's been complied with. It was complied with right at the beginning of the debate, because unlike you, we know that you have to put dissent motions in writing and have them moved and seconded. And that's why it was put down there right at the beginning of the debate, you silly goose. But no wonder that no wonder everyone behind you is talking about getting rid of you as Leader of Government Business in the House. And well, my point is, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, that we dissent from your ruling because your ruling was wrong, because it breaches precedent. Uh, previously established in this House, and that if the right of the House to ask a member to be no longer heard is taken away from the opposition, or in fact any member of the parliament, it is a huge breach of the parliamentary requirements of the Westminster system, which allows the opposition or any member to move, that a member be no longer heard when they are being irrelevant, when they are traducing the good name of the parliament, when they are using motions Order. such as this the one for stunts, rather than getting on with the business of government. The Leader of the House. Sorry. Uh, the question is that the Speaker's ruling be dissented from. Uh, I call the Leader of Government Business. Thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in support of your ruling. Page 514 of House of Representatives practice, something not referred to by either of the speakers opposite, as were the standing orders not referred to, is very clear. Orders, Closure of member. It says the following. With the exception stated below, any member may move at any time. The member who is speaking be no longer heard and the question must be put immediately and resolved without debate. The leader, uh, it, then says, hmm. it then says the motion cannot be moved when a member is giving no a notice of motion or moving the terms of the motion or if, when the same question has been negatived, the chair is of the opinion that the further motion is an abuse of the orders or forms of the House or is moved for the purpose of obstructing business. Mr Deputy Speaker, House of Reps practice is very clear. We know, we know that the reason why they've moved this dissent is so that they can work out whether they're for or against work choices today. That is why they've done it, so they can have a tactics committee meeting. Your ruling is correct, Mr Deputy Speaker, and, uh, and your ruling should be upheld. Yeah. I thank the Leader. The question is that I call the uh, Honourable Member for Warringah. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm very pleased uh, to support uh, the motion moved uh, by the uh, Manager of Opposition Business, be not because it gives me any pleasure uh, to see this motion of dissent in the House, uh, and I want to say that uh, in every other respect, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, your chairmanship has been exemplary, absolutely exemplary, but in this important respect, uh, you have, I regret to say, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, breached the ordinary standards and procedures and conventions of this House. Now, I, I, Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker, I have been in this House for some time, uh, and I have been involved dare I say it, in a few pretty rugged parliamentary debates. And I can remember being in this chamber when I was the Minister for Employment Services, moving a suspension motion on the then member for Dixon. And I can remember, and I invite the clerks to go back uh, and look at the Hansard and advise you on this very point, Mr Deputy Speaker, I can remember being subject to successive closure motions by the then opposition. And if it was good enough for the then opposition uh, to close government ministers uh, within uh, a few seconds of the resolution of a previous motion, if it was good enough for the occupant of the chair on that day uh, to allow successive closure motions, the precedent has been set uh, and we were perfectly entitled to move a closure motion on this minister who has not learnt a new script since she got into government. It was all very well in opposition to run this anti-work choices script but you've got to govern when you are a minister in this country. It's, you, you cannot govern this country by constantly repeating a mantra of opposition. You've actually got to make decisions, and that's what this government has not done uh, in the three and a half months in which it has been in office. And I refer uh, to no uh, greater authority than the former leader of the Labor Party, the member for Werriwa, who has said that this new government has engaged in nothing less than a circus of symbolism since it has been in office. And this stunt today is the very quintessence of symbolism, and it demonstrates that rather than get on, than get on with the government, 
they are still running the same tight old script. They are basically an opposition who found their way into government because of the longevity uh, of the incumbents, and now they are trying to work out what to do. That is the problem that this, uh, this, this government has. It doesn't actually know what to do now that it finds itself in government. Now, come on. I, I say to members opposite, surely, surely all those years as union organisers, surely all those years of delving deeply into the workplace law, you must know something about this. You must know something about this. I accept. I accept. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I accept that that the former government lost the election. But having lost the election, you are now in government. Uh, and members opposite simply have to get on with the task of governing and constantly running the sorts of stunts that we see this morning, having deceived uh, the opposition uh, about their desire to get on with government business, having engaged in a rank act of deception to then pull on this stunt uh, and then uh, to have pulled uh, that bogus uh, point of order which you unfortunately uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, have upheld, really demonstrates it really demonstrates that the former member for Werriwa, Mark Latham, is right. These guys don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. They are engaging in a circus of symbolism, and frankly, the time of this parliament is being needlessly, needlessly consumed uh, by 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 a government which should know better constantly running the old lines at the behest uh, of a Minister for Workplace Relations who was moderately effective in opposition. I will grant her that. Moderately effective in opposition. But the task is not to criticise the former government. The task now uh, is to be a good government in the stead of the former government. And I have to say this, Mr Deputy Speaker, the longer this mob opposite is in place, the better the Howard government is going to look. The longer this mob, the longer this mob uh, are in place, uh, the more likely that the people of Australia will look back to 2.1 million new jobs, a 21% increase in real wages, and a doubling of the real net wealth of Australians as a golden age to which they would like to aspire at the next election. Uh, I call the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And I speak against the dissent motion and in favour of your ruling. And in doing so, Mr Speaker, can I say it is apparent from the quality of the debate that this dissent motion is actually not about your ruling. It's about, it's about buying time for the opposition and the Liberal Party to work out how they want to vote on the motion I've moved. And they're trying to characterise that motion as unimportant, but of course it calls on them to do a very important thing. And the reason this dissent has been moved is to prevent them for some time coming to this point of decision. Either, the either Deputy Prime Minister will resume her seat and the member for Sturt ought not to talk before he gets the call. I call, I call the member for Sturt on a point of order. <laughs> Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, uh, during the uh, presentations by myself the benefit of the member for Sturt, Sturt, Warringah, the government uh, order, was very clear that we have to stick Sturt to the dissent motion. The member down the chair. Sorry. What I was about to say to the member for Sturt, who has been here long enough to know, is that the correct means of reference to the person occupying the chair is Deputy Speaker and not Acting Deputy uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank you for your clarification. I now call the member for Sturt on a point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, thank you for that. Uh, the government members have to be relevant to the dissent motion, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, obviously, they pointed this out during our presentations, and we were relevant to the dissent motion. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister is now talking about uh, work choices order. and uh, issues that are order. in the past, and I ask you to draw her There's to the no debate. point of order. I call the Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you. On the dissent, Mr Deputy Speaker, it is, it, it is a device. Why is it a device? Because the opposition doesn't want to declare its hand on the motion I have moved, and there are only three choices. They vote for it despite their secret desires to keep work choices. They order. vote against it and order. absolutely order. show order. themselves to be the party of order. work choices and with far, a secret plan to many. reintroduce AWAs. Order. Would the Deputy Prime Minister resume her seat? 
Uh, there are far too many interjections uh, from the opposition front bench. Uh, I draw members to the, to the provisions of the standing orders and I call the Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Or thirdly, they can cower in the corner because they don't know what they stand for any longer. Only three choices. Cover up work choices or cower. That's the three choices. The Cover Deputy up work Prime choices Minister or cower. What are you going seat? to choose? The Deputy Prime Minister will resume her seat. I call the honourable member for Warringah. Well, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, um, in, the, in the tradition that's been established uh, by the Leader of the House uh, earlier in this debate, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister is required strictly to debate the dissent motion, not to make extraneous points, and I would also suggest that she stop shrieking at us. I mean, yeah. really and truly, well, um, uh, it's, 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 like, it's, a, it's an assault, it's an assault on our hearing. It really order, is. Order. The honourable member for Baringa will uh, resume his seat. I call the deputy prime minister and uh, counsel her to focus on the debate before the chamber. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I am focusing on that debate by showing that this dissent motion is a device to prevent the Liberal Party being put to the embarrassment that it obviously can't, uh, it can't meet. It's out now in a series of crisis meetings because we are requiring them to declare to the Australian people. Are you still pro-work choices? Order. Are you the cowering Deputy because Minister you can't decide? That... I call the uh, honourable member for Cowper. Mr Deputy Speaker, the, the matter at hand is in fact a dissent motion and Order. Order. the people of uh, Australia... Order. Is, the, is the honourable member seeking to address the chair on a point of order? I am, Mr Deputy Speaker. The honourable member for Cowper. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and, and certainly I would repeat uh, that uh, we would expect the Deputy Prime Minister to address the issue of the dissent motion. The people of Australia are order, waiting for some no serious point of order. debate. I call the Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Now, I know they don't want to face this decision. I don't know they don't want to tell Australians the truth. They are a party with form when it comes to deceit on workplace relations. But you will be required to vote, and you will have to vote in favour or against or order. power in the, the corner. Deputy Prime what Minister are you going to do? Seat. Are you I call the order. Oh, order. The Deputy Prime Minister will resume her seat. The member for Moncrief, presumably Mr. Deputy on a Speaker. point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, we've, you've drawn the speakers, uh, in this case the, the speaker's attention to be relevant to the motion before the House. We're hearing time and time again the Deputy Prime Minister make reference to work choices. This is not about work choices. We know that the original motion, oh, order. We know that the original motion was a stunt by the government, oh, but order. in this case, the Mr Deputy Moncrief Speaker, will I would ask you to... Order! The member for Moncrief will resume his seat or I will deal with him. The Deputy Prime Minister will focus on the motion before the House, which is a motion of dissent from the Speaker's ruling. I've been advised that the time for debate expires at 12.37. Oh, the Deputy Prime Minister's time has expired, and I apologise to the House. The Honourable Member for, 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 for not, uh, for not noticing the expiration of her time. I call the Honourable Member for Cowper. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, because I, I regret that in this case, I, I certainly respect your uh, position in this House, Mr Deputy Speaker, but I regret that in this... Order. There's far too much, uh, uh, and one isn't able to hear the speaker. I certainly am not able to hear the member to whom I have given the call. I call the honourable member for Cowper. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I, I'm sure that it is a matter of uh, much regret uh, to you and the members opposite that uh, they were unable to hear my contribution in this debate. And uh, it is of great concern to us that, uh, whilst uh, we respect your ruling, that in this case uh, that the. Uh, the matter is uh, not appropriately dealt with because the people of Australia are really expecting action from this government. They really are expecting action, and there are very important matters that are before this House today that the people of Australia are expecting to be dealt with. But what do we have? As a result, as a result of the opposition-like tactics of the members opposite, we see the time of this House wasted, and rather than the important matters of the day, such as the cost of living, such as how carers and pensioners are going to continue to live in, against the backdrop of rising prices. Rather than those things being dealt with, we see a childish and trivial stunt by this government taking up the time of this House.
because I know that they can, they can kick carers around and they can kick seniors around, but we don't want to see this opposition that happening and we don't want to see them attempt to kick the parliamentary process around, Mr Deputy Speaker. I know that the actions of this government are already causing great distress amongst the people whom I represent, and I really recommend that they should be putting their energies into good government rather than political stunts, because there is no mileage for this government pulling political stunts, embarking on endless symbolism, uh, when order, in fact— Order. The honourable member Cowper will resume his seat, as under the standing orders the time for this debate has expired. The question before the chair is that the deputy speaker's be, uh, ruling be dissented from. The question before the chair is that the deputy speaker's ruling be dissented from. The, uh, I'd ask for those members, uh, all those in favour, say aye. aye. Those against say nay. nay. I think the nays have it. Division required? Yes. Ring the bells. <laughs> Budget in four weeks. We've got the Treasurer here for an hour. Must have winter chair at the RC.
Lock the doors. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Ryan and um, Ryan and um, Riverina. Uh, tellers for the eyes and the honourable member for Shortland and Werriwa tellers for the nose. the tellers so that the count can proceed expeditiously and accurately.
order. The result of the division I 60, noes 79. The question is therefore determined in the negative. The question now before the chair is that the motion moved by the Deputy Prime Minister be agreed to. The Honourable Member. Uh, as the, uh, as as the Honourable um, Deputy Prime Minister's time has expired, uh, the, I was going to call the opposition. Order, order, order. I call the Leader of the House. Mr Deputy Speaker, I move the motion be put. Oh, it's your own motion. The, uh, no. No. Order. Order. The, uh, the, dep the, the Leader of the House has moved that the motion be put. Point of order. Order. The deputy leader of the opposition will resume her seat. Uh, I saw the uh, I saw the leader of the house first. Uh, the motion. Speaker. I call the member for North Sydney on a point of order. Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker, the time for the Deputy Prime Minister had expired. The, the, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition was at the dispatch box, ready for the call, and then the Leader of Government Business sought to close down his own motion without an opportunity the for the North Liberal Sydney, Party and National Party the to member express for North a view. Sydney will resume his seat. I was perfectly aware that the time for speaking of the Deputy Prime Minister had expired. Uh, I'm well aware that the call, were the debate to continue, uh, would have been given to the opposition. However, um, the government moved that the uh, question be put, as is competent for the government to do, and, uh, and thus uh, there's no point of order uh, or no validity in the point of order moved by the honourable member for North Sydney. I call the, uh, the member for Moncrief uh, on a point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, you gave the call to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition before you interrupted it order for the, the Leader of Government Business. The member for Moncrief will resume his seat. A careful scrutiny of the Hansard record will disclose that, as uh, the Deputy Speaker, I did not call the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Now, the question before the, before the, chamber, before the Chair is that the motion be put. Um, the member for Warringah on a point of order. Well, Mr Speaker, I, I wish to move dissent uh, in your ruling, and I do so move. You brought this <laughs> on. I'm advised that uh, the member for Warringah will resume his seat. Um, I'm advised that it was not a, a ruling competent, uh, uh, of which, um, or from which the, uh, the House is competent to dissent. The question before the House is that the motion be put. Uh, the, um, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Speaker in this position only this week, or was it last week, when the parties were getting back to their places, called on a member and then corrected it when he appreciated yeah, yeah. that the yeah, yeah. precedent that the call was, that the call was with the opposition. Mr Speaker, I was Mr Deputy Speaker, I was coming to the spot here. I was order, calling order for this your far attention. Too much audible was, conversation in Mr. the Deputy chamber. Speaker, I was calling for your I'm attention. To the and in Leader similar of the circumstances, the Speaker gave the call. In that case, it was to the government. In this case, it should be to the opposition. I, Mr Deputy Speaker, I, I, that was what I was seeking to attract your attention. You looked at me and I came in to get I the thank call. The deputy leader and of in the these circumstances, I, I thank the Deputy the Leader of the Opposition. Change there is no mind. point of order. Mr. She will yeah. resume her seat. The Honourable Member for North Sydney on a point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, let me be very clear about the process here. The government came in with a motion to suspend its own standing orders to bring on a motion. That motion, that motion, uh, there, there was debate from the government. There was no opportunity for the opposition 
to speak to the motion, and now they have moved to gag us before we have a right to speak on a motion order. that condemns there is, us. There is no point of that's order. That's not a parliament. That's there a joke. There is no point of order. That's a joke. The complete abuse of the parliament. The, uh, the honourable. The honourable member for North Sydney will contain himself, as will the deputy prime minister. Order. There is no point of order. I put the question. All those in favour, say aye. Those against, say nay. The member for Warringah does not have the call. He will resume his seat. All those. Uh, I. Uh, I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells. Member, leader, the, le the leader of the house would assist if he just resumed his seat for a moment. Uh, the uh, leader of the house. Well, there is no point of order because a division was called for. Uh, when, um, when opposition members were here, um, and of course, uh, under the standing orders of the parliament, the bells ring for four minutes, uh, and members have the opportunity of staying in the house and voting, or they have the opportunity of uh, moving in another direction. There certainly were two voices calling for a division, and I therefore call for a division. Member for Denison on a point of order. The Honourable Member for Denison on a point of order. Well, would, would, would the member for Denison point, to me, point me to the standing order which says it is a contempt? I don't have the standing orders in my hand in the course of this debate, but I would ask you to consult with the clerk and I think you identify it very quickly. Would the, the honourable member for, Camp, uh, for Fraser uh, ought to, uh, I think, uh, under our standing orders, cover his head if he intends? Or, or, or I thank the Leader of the House. Uh, the, the, the Honourable Member for Fraser, does he have a point of order? He spoke first. Standing Order 128 says members calling for a division must not leave the area of members' seats and they must vote with those members who, in the Speaker's opinion, are in the minority. So at least the members who called for the division are in breach of the standing orders. They've left in breach of the standing orders and you should call them back. Under standing order 128, members calling for division must not leave the areas of the members' seats, so they must vote with those members who, in the Speaker's opinion, were in the minority when the members called aye or no. I would there I therefore uh, call on the clerks uh, to. Uh, request that those honourable members who called for the division to return to the chamber. Yeah. Or alternatively, as they're not present, uh, there's probably little point in proceeding with the division. So the question has been determined in accordance with the affirmative. Uh, the, division has, the division has been abandoned. I'm the speaker. I'm the deputy speaker, and um, I've spoken to the clerk. The clerk pointed out we could either require those speakers to 
those, those members who call for the division to return to the chamber or alternatively, uh, as they're not here, uh, there is no point or there is no need to proceed with the, with the, uh, with the division. And that is the way that I have ruled. The Leader of the House on a point of order. Given the contempt that the members have sh shown for Standing Order 128 and their obligations as a member of the House, I would ask you to take action against those members. Yeah. I thank the Leader of the House. This is a matter that I will refer to Mr Speaker. The question now is that the motion be agreed to. The question is that the motion moved by the Deputy Prime Minister be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say nay. No. I think, <laughs> although the member for North Sydney has a, has a strong voice, I think the ayes have it. No, the noes have it. Uh, division required. Ring the bells.
Lock the doors. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair. The nays will pass to the left of the chair. I appoint the honourable members for Shortland and Werriwa, tellers for the eyes, and the honourable members for Riverina uh, and Ryan, tellers for the nays. Would honourable members uh, face in the direction of the tellers, please, to assist in the count?
Order. Order. The result of the division is ayes 80, noes 58. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The Honourable the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Mr Deputy Speaker, I move.